Hey gang, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Bellucci. I'm a taxidermist, sculptor, photographer, author, among other things. This is the first in what I hope will be a series of how-to videos, and I'd like you to join me on this journey. The first of these videos will be creating a silicone mold and subsequent casting of a small mammal skull. Now, I've had people ask me, well, why would you want to create a casting of a small mammal skull? Fair question. The answer is simple. As a sculptor, the skull is an important part of the overall piece, the, the clay model, if you will. The problem with small mammals using their skull is that the skulls are very delicate. Bones are small and thin. I've got big old heavy paws here um, and the skull is easily damaged either during plain ordinary handling or with the application of clay and pressing the clay onto the skull. Smaller details can be cracked and actually fractured and, and completely broken off the skulls. I know this from first-hand experience. It happens. The skulls I will be using in my, in my clay models and my sculptures are from my own personal collection. Some of them have taken me years to acquire, either purchasing or as gifts from other taxidermists and, and, and what have you. Rather than ruin them, I would just assume make a good reproduction. I'm not looking to create museum quality reproduction skulls, but a good, clean casting of a skull that is workable to be added into a sculpture. Uh, the uh, skull in, in, in question uh, for the demonstration purposes is that of an African wildcat, large male African wildcat. However, the techniques that I'm going to show can be used on any type of skull. Doesn't matter if it's a small African wildcat, a caracal, a bobcat skull, coyote, jackal, African lion. It doesn't matter the size. It can even be primates. I use the same method to recreate the skull as well as the entire skeleton of a vervet monkey for a sculpture that was created. So, I would like you to join me in this adventure and see how it's done. The first thing I'll be showing will be uh, my workbench and how it's set up and how I have the clay set up under a heat lamp and we're going to go from there. So come on along. Thanks a lot. A small container which is holding the clay that I will be using to set up the mold box. This is a non-sulfur clay because I'm going to use platinum, sil platinum cure silicone. And uh, this will not inhibit the cure of the silicone. If you use a clay that has got sulfur content in it, it will inhibit platinum cure silicone. It can give a difficult time to tin cure silicone curing. Uh, and I want, you know, you want to avoid that at all costs, uh, especially with platinum uh, silicones. They're a little pricier than your average uh, tin cure silicone. What I've got set up here is, and I will show this, I'll pull it out of the, um, out of the bag it's in to show you more clearly what I've got, my little setup here. What this is, is simply, it's very, very simply, it's a piece of plywood. And it's sitting in a plastic Ziploc bag. Uh, I used to have wax paper under this, but uh, you know, to keep the clay from sticking to the, the board, but that has since gone the way of the dinosaur and has since disappeared. Um, the clay in this container is being warmed under a 60 watt bulb. Uh, you don't want to go too high in your wattage because that will create far too much heat. Um, some of the other tools that I've got here, uh, you'll notice there are little runners on this plywood board. The reason for those is quite simple. The height is even on both sides. This will allow me to roll my clay to a, speci a, a specified height. Um, you can stack clay pieces on top of each other to create a, 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 a deeper bed uh, for the skull, depending on the size. Of course, 
The small cat skull is not going to need very deep clay, but the large cat skull will require much deeper clay, as you can see. It's, it's, it's a big skull. Okay, so what's going to happen now, I'm going to slide this back into the plastic bag and simply take some of the warmed clay out of my container and you can see these were strips of protolina clay. It's the most recent substitute for the former clean clay which is no longer manufactured. I'll simply take these a couple of pieces of this protolina sulfur free clay. This is the soft this is the soft clay. It comes in a soft, medium, and firm. And what I'm doing simply, I'm going to sandwich these two pieces together between my hands, put them on the uh, plastic covered board, and with a good old fashioned rolling pin, I'm going to go ahead, proceed to flatten both of these out until the runners on either side keep it from being flattened any more than it is. And as you can see this gives me a nice even piece of clay. Now what I've got here is a clay cutter. Um, it's, uh, this was purchased at Michael's over in the, um, the wax, uh, the candle making um, section I believe it was. Uh, you can also use a bread cutter or pastry cutter, but what I do with this, I cut straight down and I get a nice straight line for my needs. And what I want is a good clean flat section of clay that I can then place onto another surface. And you see we get, we get nice, even lines with this method here. Now I'm going to measure off how much length of clay I need for the skull, as well as the width. And as you can see, the skull is on here. I want to have a little bit of clearance at the front, a little bit of clearance at the back. You don't want to overdo it, and you definitely want some clearance on the side. Again, not too much. This can be trimmed down again later. I'm simply going to mark with my fingernail where to make that cut. Put the skull aside for now. Come in with my little chopper and cut this piece of clay. Now this will be put aside for a moment. some more clay. I'm going to take this clay that was already rolled. Well, it's still warm and it's nice and warm. It's very, very malleable. I'm simply going to roll it up in a ball, run it between my hands, press it down with the palm of my hand onto the board, plastic covered board, and again roll it using the rolling pin Flatten it out, and as I stated, these little pieces of strip plywood that are been glued and nailed down on either side here are only going to allow this to be flattened out to a certain height, and no more. I'll now take this piece that was trimmed, put it on top like so, cut, Cut. Put these little scraps back in the warmer box under the, under the lamp. Cut. You want it to be even. You want to make your cuts straight as possible. And cut again. <coughs> now, we've got two pieces, the same width, same length. 
Okay. Now you notice the thickness has been doubled. This is what we will. This is the depth we will need in order to securely embed this skull in the clay. Which means these get put aside for a moment. More clay gets pulled out of the warming box. Smash it all together. And I've got to make, I need to roll out and cut two more sections like this <coughs> to create the full width and length and depth of the bed that I need to create the mold for this, the mold box for this skull. All right, so we roll it, smash it down, and with the rolling pin, roll it even. Nice and even. There we go. Again, we're going to use these two pieces that have already been cut and trimmed. Lay them on top. Trim this third piece to size. Putting this, the cuttings back in the warming box under the lamp so they stay nice and soft. Like so. And like so. I gotta do this one more time. I'm gonna take out lots of clay strips and trimmings from previously. Mush them all together, they're all nice and warm. This is simply setting up the base that we need to place the skull on top of. Roll it, mash it down, flatten it with the rolling pin. Again, there's a lot of repetition here, but it's pretty necessary. We go the length first. Again, putting the trimmings back under the heat lamp. You always want to keep your clay warm. Always keeping your clay warm, whether you're creating sculptures or making mold beds. But here in Ohio, it's not the warmest state in the Union. So a little extra help from artificial sources, in this case a 60 watt bulb, are a great help. Now we've got two sections to create the mold, bed, the mold bed. With these done, I'm simply going to put my rolling pad aside and bring up my mold making board. It's just simply a piece of that melame shelving, if you will. The finish holds the clay and allows you to do this work. Now the first thing you want to do is squeeze the two sections together. What is here is an advanced stage of what I'm going to show. And once I reach this point, we go back to working on the original skull for the mold I plan on making. Now this seam down the center. I want this to be blended. Simple matter, take your finger, go across the seam on an angle from one end to the other and then back again in the opposite direction. This will give you a nice joined area. After that we simply take this rolling pin and just light, light pressure. We press down on the clay just to bind all the sections together. Now for the skull. And this is where it gets interesting. Well this is all interesting but 
we'll get this lined up here. Let's get this all set. Make sure we're focused. Alrighty. A little closer in, please. Thank you all. All right. First thing to do, now in my collection, I like to keep my skulls and lower jaws together. So what I've done is really quite simple. I've taken a little bit of uh, tape. In this case, it's a bandaging type tape. And the lower jaws are taped to the upper skull. Real simple. We just simply remove the tape. Okay, not so simply. Need to get in there. I have large fingers, so that doesn't make anything easy. Okay, there's one side come away. Yeah, they've been in, they've been in my display case for a while. <laughs> there we go. All right. Lower jaw is detached. We have now is the complete upper skull. Now what I want to do is very simple. I want to center this on the clay and very very quickly trace around it on the clay. You can use a pencil, you can use a modeling tool, anything just to simply mark the clay where the skull is setting. The reason for this, you need to know where to hollow out this clay base in order to lower the skull into the clay to begin the molding bed for the skull. I don't know how well this is going to pick up, but here it is. And you can see where the outline of the skull is here. Okay, real simple. Grab a great big modeling tool, okay? This will remove sections of clay. We want the underside of the skull to sit deep in the clay. So we take out chunks Paying close attention to the nose area and the center of the skull. We don't need to empty out under the eye sockets, the zygomatic arch, the eye sockets. That doesn't need to be emptied out as much. But we do want the base of the skull, its bottom center area and you can look at the underside of the skull and figure out what you want taken out of course we want we want to remove the area where the teeth are located and that's simply a matter of paying attention to the subject at hand if you are doing the skull of say a small antelope then of course they have a much different arrangement of the skull sections. Now we use a little smaller modeling tool, just a little smaller, still a good size tool. We want to empty out this front section where the front and the, the upper incisors are going to seat. The reason for that is these tiny little teeth right here can quite easily be pulled out of the skull. Sometimes it pays to secure them with a little of the liquid uh, uh, cyanoacrylate glue, the CA type glue, your super glue. Not the thick gel. You want the glue to run up into these tooth sockets. So, what we're going to do here is dig down into the clay 
and really, really hollow out this front portion just to keep the teeth from being pulled out of the skull. We're going to get another fitting. At this point, we want to press the skull down into the clay and further mark where parts are going to be located. Now I'm going to get a little smaller, an even smaller modeling tool, this little fella right here, or gal, whatever it is. And we go down, where we find where the incisors have been located. We go down and dig this part of the clay away. Okay. 